So today I'm going to do a quick demonstration of the method that we're going to use for the low water immersion dyeing. I've got five pint pots here, um, which have each got a sixteenth of a metre of white, pure white cotton that's been pre-washed and dried before I've torn it up and put it into the pots. And we've also got two small beakers of um, of pre-mixed dye that I've mixed before. Um, this is a turquoise, it's Procyon dye. This is turquoise and this is golden yellow. I would probably prefer to use a lemon yellow because it's more of a pure yellow, but I didn't actually have any. And you will get a yellow effect with this. It is a bright yellow. It will just be slightly different depending on what colours you choose, but we're working with the primary colours. So this method is going to come up with the kind of mottled, um, multi-faceted piece of fabric and the scrunching of the fabric into the pots ensures that um, there is a lot of texture there in the fabric. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take one of the dyes, it doesn't really matter, I'm going to start with blue, and a second beaker. And I'm going to pour half of this dye into this beaker roughly half and I'm going to then put the pot that's in my right hand onto the large pot one. I'm then going to top up again my um, first beaker to the two thirds point with just plain water. I'm then going to pour half of that into the second beaker and pour that onto pot two. Again, top up to two thirds. So you're getting a, a half strength each time. Pour half of that into the beaker. Pour that on pot three. The same again, top up to two thirds or three quarters, just thereabouts. It doesn't really matter. Again, the strength of it will just, it'll just uh, work on how it comes out. It doesn't really uh, matter. It's just a, preference really. Um, again half of that into there and I'm going to just tip the last of the dye into the final pot just so that it's not wasted and then we get rid of the blue. Then we're going to do the same thing with the yellow but we're going to do it in reverse discarding that pot for now. Um, so we're just working with the four pots so the full strength yellow goes into pot four then we top up half strength into pot three and so on. Top up, Oops. half of it into there, into pot two. And the weakest strength, yellow, goes into the greatest um, strength of blue, i.e. pot one. Then, um, with the remainder, we're going to put that into pot five, the one that we just ignored in the beginning. Um, the dye will not fix unless you add a fixative, and I'm using soda ash um, water, which I've also pre-mixed, um, mixed at the rate of uh, basically one teaspoon of soda ash to 250 mils of water, which seems to get a decent result for me. And then what we're going to do is top up um, the pots with that mixture. And the dye will not start to fix until you actually do put the fixative in. Um, it would stain, but it wouldn't penetrate the fabric uh, properly. So it is essential that we use the soda ash. Some people use salt, which is said to give a... a a more even dyeing but actually what we want in this method is an uneven dyeing really we want to see all the textures of the dyes so um we are actually just kind of throwing it in there without any salt it doesn't matter and you can see already that it's turning green to uh, different degrees and what you'll get is a grade gradation of um from kind of more green to more blue green 
at the end of it. And it's a really nice, easy way of dyeing lots of different colours. You can do it with any of the primary colours. So obviously the next one would be to do red and yellow, and then you would do red and blue together. So you would get a spectrum then of all the different colours.